Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be going through the structure of prokaryotic cells and viruses. So some similarities but some big differences in these and they are becoming more and more important that you know these in detail. The structure of prokaryotic cells. There are some features that these cells have in common with eukaryotic cells. The cell membrane, the cell wall. In the case of the cell wall, although they have the same structure, it's made of a different material. It's made of glycoprotein called murin, not cellulose. The cytoplasm, the ribosomes. These are 70S ribosomes. They are smaller than the eukaryotic ones and they also have DNA. So the DNA in prokaryotes is a circular loop. It's not linear and it's not associated with histones and it's not found in a nucleus. It floats free in the cytoplasm in a region called the nucleoid. There are also some structures missing or there are structures that are different here to eukaryotes. There are no membrane bound organelles in prokaryotic cells. This makes sense if you think about it because the bacteria we're looking at here is probably a very similar size to the mitochondria and the chloroplasts that are in eukaryotic cells. Because remember we said about the endosymbiotic theory, they were once bacteria. So they would be too big to fit inside this because they're about the same size. So there aren't any of the normal other organelles we've just been looking at. Bacteria cells contain plasmids. These are extra little circular loops of DNA that often contain useful genes, such as antibiotic resistance. It is also possible for bacteria to share these plasmids with one another. The capsule. This is a mucus-like substance that's secreted by some bacteria, not all, but it helps to protect them from drying out, and it also helps to protect them from attack from chemicals, such as antibiotics. The flagellum. This is a hair-like or tail-like structure that rotates and it allows these bacteria to move and often swim through liquid. This gives some bacteria the ability to move towards or away from substances, for example if they're looking for food. If we're thinking about the general size of prokaryotic cells, they're around 50 times smaller than eukaryotic cells. They're less than about 2 micrometers in diameter. We also need to be able to recognise the structures that we're talking about here in electron micrographs of bacteria as well, or at least to be able to recognise when an electron micrograph is showing us a bacteria. So this is the cytoplasm, the inside of the cell. We have quite the thick cell wall around the edge, and you could also label the cell membrane as like the inner um, line as well if you wanted. And then we have the nucleoid region or the loop of DNA. The reason we can recognise this as a bacterial cell from the image is that there's obviously no nucleus, there are no organelles, that means it must be a prokaryotic cell. Viruses are prokaryotic but they are very different to bacteria and they all have very different structures to each other. If we look here, a bacteriophage looks very different to an Ebola virus which looks very different to an adenovirus. But within this variation, all viruses have a similar overall structure. On the outside, they will have attachment proteins. This is going to allow the virus to attach to the cell that it's going to inject itself into. They will have a capsid. This is a protein coat that is surrounding the nucleic acid. And the nucleic acid can be DNA or it can be RNA. It is important to remember that viruses are not cells and they are not living. They are incredibly small. We are talking 20 nanometers up to about 300 nanometers. And they can only replicate inside a living host cell. They will have an envelope around the outside. This is a protective coat and it is only present in some viruses. 
In biology, we can work with some very small units. So it is important that you understand the relationship between these and how to convert between them. We can measure people and other large objects in meters, but that is useless when we are talking about very small things. So here is our scale. We are going to start at the big end with one millimeter. If you can't visualize that, go and grab a ruler now and look at this with the ruler on your desk while we look at this. Getting smaller, 100 micrometers, 100 microns, 10 micrometers, 1 micrometer, 100 nanometers, 10 nanometers, 2 nanometers, 1 nanometer, and then down below that, we can go to picometers and femtometers, but that is more the range of physics. Now, one millimeter is very small, but there are 10 millimeters in one centimeter, which on my screen is this big, and 100 centimeters make up one meter. Now, one millimeter is roughly the diameter of a grain of sand. A grain of pollen is roughly 100 micrometers in diameter. Down at 10 micrometers, we're looking at a red blood cell. Bacteria are roughly one micrometer, whereas viruses are much smaller at around 100 nanometers. Proteins are around 10 nanometers, and with all of these things, there is a range. Whereas DNA comes in at two nanometers, and that will be the diameter of the helix. A buckyball, carbon 60, Buckminster fullerene will come in at one nanometer, and then an atom will be 0.1 nanometers. So these are very small, but you need to keep this scale in mind when we are talking about the measurement of cells, when we are talking about um, microscope calculations, because these are the units that you're going to need to be using and the units you're going to need to be converting between. The most common ones you'll be using are millimetres, micrometres and nanometres. To go from millimetres to micrometres, you times by a thousand and times by another thousand to get to nanometres. To go from nanometres to micrometres, we need to divide by a thousand. And then from micrometres to millimetres, it is again divide by a thousand. You are going to be using those calculations a lot when we're using microscopes. So I suggest you write that on a post-it note and stick it up on your wall somewhere. Ouch! This is why in some videos I've unexplained scratches. Thank you.